Spotify Pandora. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, um, I am in a wheelchair, so it's taking me a minute to scoot in front of the camera. So if you do want to watch the live visual, um, make sure that you follow the YouTube, T-H-A, real J-A-N-E-L-L, -L, and um, also um, the couch on all social media, T-H-A, real, I mean, T-H-A couch. All right, as we are coming in, okay, let me make sure, I'm, let me make sure I'm in. YouTube is kind of shiny for some reason. I apologize, but... Hello, 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 everybody. Hey, big O. First of all, it's the Couch Chronicles where it ain't no fucking limits. And it is prison talk. It's prison talk this whole week on the couch. You're more than welcome to come share your story on this couch. All you got to do is you can tap in on the live and I'll pull you up. Or um, you can actually come sit on the couch physically if you're in the Oklahoma City area. So, um, as we're getting started, hey, big ol', hey, everybody that's tuned in, um, let's, let's get it popping. Share the live, no matter where you're watching, let me actually share it real quick. Share it with you. Okay, let me make sure. doing tonight he's been watching my stories lately that's fire as fuck for real for real okay all right i sent it already on Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. I appreciate y'all for watching and keeping up with the couch. Okay. Here we go. What up, da? What up, da? All right. Mm, I see the kisses. Let's get it popping. It's for the couch chronic, couch chronic, where there ain't no fucking limits, 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 limits. Every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 8 Central Time, you don't never want to miss a couch. Trust me, it ain't no fucking limits. I said none. I mean none, the fuck? Let's get it popping. If you just now Share the live, tell your people about the couch. It's prison talk this whole week. Let's talk about it. Hey. Bitch, I'm flying the most. When I slide in this Louis V coat. Bitch, I ice out my neck, I'm on froze. On the road, I'm just turning low. Still thinking I'm all in my zone. She thinks she's on cracking the coast. Once I slide with this glizzy, go ghost. Bitch, I'm flying the most. When I slide in this Louis V coat. Just know I got the code. I like it. Now 
surprised that they don't wanna see me win. I done cut off some family and some of friends. I know I change since I gotta pop the pin, but for the better, I'm flyer than most. Not surprised that they don't wanna see me win. I will cut off some family and some of friends. I know I change since I gotta pop the pin, but for the better, I'm flyer than or re-listen on Spotify and Pandora because it was still playing on Spotify and Pandora. So um, you didn't miss anything. Don't even trip. And Prison Talk is every month. So if you didn't get some information this month, it's always going to be some information next month. I'll talk about it every month. because And the reason why I specifically wanted to do Prison Talk was because when I first got out of prison, people were really, I'm talking about, and I was starting, this is when I started my music. They was telling me that I was not allowed to speak on, thank you so much, to speak on, you know, my time in prison, to speak on even being locked up at all. And it did something to me, like, it really made me, like, depressed. It made me um, hard to talk to because I'm like, I don't know what to talk about with y'all. <laughs> like, I literally did nine years. And... I went in when I was 17. So when I went in, it was still Black Planet, MySpace. I don't know what y'all got going on right now. I'm trying to learn. But the only way I know how to learn is to talk about my past and talk about, but they wasn't having that. Bro, they was not having that. And so now, you know, once I moved from out of Detroit, you know, I was able to step more into my own shell. I was able to be more of myself. I was able to be around the people that I did time with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know Icky. 
I really wish you would come sit down on the couch and talk about this song, but whenever you're comfortable. So um, it just, it really did something, you know, I didn't have nobody to talk to when I was in Detroit. You know, I did have a friend that did time. You know, I had some friends, don't get me twisted, don't get me wrong, but I didn't have friends that I could genuinely be myself with. Some of them didn't know the true me until I left Detroit. Some of them didn't even know I did time. And it was because that's how they set it up. And I don't mean they, like, I mean, like, the people that was managing me at the time. They didn't want nobody to know. Mm -mm, no. That was, like, a stain on your, your, on your record. And it really is. But it's, like, a stain to them when I first was starting. To them in the music industry. I'm like, what? So nobody ever did time and still did music? They literally was trying to make me feel like I was irrelevant what I was going through, what I needed to talk about was irrelevant. So once I started being able to be myself, yeah. Once I started being able to be myself, I started getting more love. I started getting more, you know, people on my side. And I'm like, I've been trying to be myself. Y'all the ones that changed me. You know, so I do prison talk every month. That way we can comfortably talk about prison without people being like, oh, you just want to glorify prison. You just want to... They always think because we talk about it that we're glorifying it or that we praise it or that we, we have fun. No, motherfucker. We're traumatized. Like, what? Some of us did half of our time, half of, spend half of our life in prison, and we have no choice but to reminisce and talk about the things that happened in the yard because when we try to, you know, go back to bringing up an example, the only examples that we know is the examples that we made in prison. And... Like I said, some people didn't like that. And that's why I couldn't be myself when I first got out. Now that I could be myself, I'm like, if you don't like it, fuck it. Do you want me to put Vaseline on you? On it? So I could fuck you the fuck. Like, don't nobody give a fuck about that shit. I am going to be 100% me, period. Like, and I want you to be 100% you because it will make you so depressed. It will. When you can't be yourself, when you can't be around people and genuinely be who you are, even if it's goofy you, even if you just, like, want to tell, like, come on now, like, just be yourself. Be around people who allow you to be yourself. Be around people who don't try to box you up in a box like you back in prison. Because that's what they did. They put me right back in prison, outside. Hey. Welcome home. Psh, psh, psh. Welcome back in. <laughs> you know, so always be yourself. Don't ever let nobody tell you, oh, your story's not worth telling. Your story is worth telling. I don't give a fuck if you like, well, everybody else's story is kind of like this too. Everybody ain't you. Everybody ain't you telling it. You get that out. Because the way you tell it and the way I tell it, the way I tell it might not help a motherfucker, but the way you tell it, might really help somebody. The way you tell it might not help a motherfucker, but the way I tell it might really do it. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep speaking. Speak your truth. Speak your truth. Now, your truth might hurt some people's feelings. Your truth might hurt. Your truth might make some people think, oh, my God, is she coming for me? Um, Because in my story, you wasn't as nice as you thought she was. I'm coming for you. How about how I felt on the yard when you was coming for me? How about how I feel right now when I still think about how you made me feel on the yard? Truth. Seriously. We can't help when we get flashbacks. I always tell you guys this. like, So to be able to comfortably talk about the things that you've been through without people being like, oh, yeah, she just trying to... No. We're just trying to get this off of our chest. And don't tell me, oh, well, go get a journal. I got that shit, too. How about it? It ain't doing as much as this is. It's not. I don't care. For some people, it does. For me, this is amazing. When I first got out of prison, I started off, I don't know if you guys know what Periscope is, but Periscope was the, the live for Twitter. And... I would go live on Twitter and I literally, this is, mind you, I didn't have friends yet that was out 
that um, did time with me that I was really cool with. All the ones that I did time with that, that I was really cool with was still in prison. So when I got out, I'm like, shit, only thing I know how to do is try to learn how to be in the world. And um, I joined um, Twitter because I heard people talking about Twitter. Um, and then um, I got on Periscope and I would just talk. Do y'all know, I, I literally, there's some people that follow me still to this day that was literally my Periscope that literally have followed me since Periscope, I kid you not, literally have been rocking with me since then. And still keep up with my music career, myself, everything about me. And shout out to y'all, because I know that y'all some fan. I love y'all. But, you know, I'm very appreciative that I'm able to be myself. You know, I hate, I, I hated not being me. I hated feeling like I was fake. I hated feeling like, um, well, I can't tell this person a certain, I can't be as real with this person as I would be as real with this person because this person never did any time or this person ain't even supposed to know. To me, it was terrible. It was traumatizing. It was another trauma on top of a trauma. It's like, damn, I just want to talk. I just want to get this off my chest. So prison talk is for us. The ones that want to get things off of our chest, the ones that have so much to talk about, the ones that have been through a lot on the yard and have stories and stories and stories for days because we do. We have stories for days. I know I do. I've been through so much. I even see, let me show you something. Y'all see this? Do you know, <laughs> I used to work at Boss and Boss on the yard is a telemarketing company and now, with Boss, literally, you, I'm not kidding. And, and even with working at Boss, I was also in the band. So whenever you're in the band and whenever you work at Boss, you get to be on the yard, you know, a little bit, not even really just a little bit longer, but sometimes you come in a little bit later than the other people that's already in their sales. Or sometimes it's like that. Hey, Miss Krista, I love you. So sometimes you have that. And let me tell you what. Every time I used to come back to my cell, I'd be walking from the gym to the building. And do you know, I kid you not, I always, every time, it never failed. But I never said nothing. Anybody that was locked up with me and they know that I caught them, you, you know who you are. You know who you are. You know I never said nothing. But it would be times, and it's not that I didn't say nothing because... I just was like, it ain't my business. I just so happened to see it. So I would be going to the building, and I don't know why, I just would be looking. Like, when I see something flashing, like, to my right, I got to go see what it is. Like, <laughs> I know that sounds peeping Tomish. Please don't get me wrong. And I promise I was not being a peeping Tom. But so when I be on the yard, when I was on the yard, and I was walking to my dorm, I would see, like, weird shit. And I'm like... Is that what I think it is? Like, maybe I'm tripping. And if I know them, they ain't finna be like, girl, get the butt. They gonna be like, girl, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Hey, tell so-and-so I said, I love them. No, for real. That's how I would go down. Bruh. There will be times where I would be catching people fucking they, they sellies. Fucking they best friend. Fucking they, play, they cousins that they said was they cousins. And... When I was seeing them the next day, I'd be like, like, let me holler at you. And some of them was thinking that I was just trying to, you know, blackmail them. But I was never trying to blackmail. I was just like, damn, okay. I see you. Little crazy self out there. Yeah, do your thing. But, baby, when I say I used to catch so many fucking people. Hey, love, I love you. I used to catch so many people. Doing all type of shit, bruh. I used to love being on the yard late. I used to be like, shit, you never know what I'm about to see. So I used to be like, oh. some people used to be like, don't look in my window tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna be with her again. Don't tell nobody. Yeah, <laughs> fucking they homies. I'm not kidding. And then whenever it finally came out, people be like, oh my god, I, I had no idea this was going on, and I'm just like. I had an idea, but it ain't my business. Okay. 
I wasn't, I wasn't the one to just be like, yo, they are fucking or, hey, yo, I seen so-and-so fucking last night. No. Mm-mm. No, baby, that's a, not that I was scared of anybody, but why start unnecessary beef when you don't have to? If you're on the yard and you see something that you're not supposed to, hey, baby, hey, baby. If you see something on the yard that you're not supposed to, then guess what? You better zip that motherfucking mouth. Unless it's something that you like, hey, I'm about to report this. If you don't plan on being a snitch, I don't give a fuck what you, I'm serious. Now, this might sound fucked up what I'm about to say, but this is how it is on the yard. If you do not plan to fight for the next motherfucker, don't stand up for the next motherfucker. I mean, if it's your friend, cool. But if you just randomly standing up for the next motherfucker because it's next to your bunk, leave it alone. Because nine times out of 10, you gonna get your ass beat. And not only that, and they gonna be friends again. And then you're going to be the only one that they don't fuck with because neither one of them fuck with you now. And it's like, God damn, hold on. Now, I beat, I got into a fight with this girl behind you. And now me and you ain't even cool. I'm telling you, always, always, always stay out of other people's business. Stay out of domestics. I don't give a fuck if this is your cousin. If your cousin is in a relationship on the yard. That's them, baby. Unless she just dog walking your cousin and you like, yo, I can't take this no more. I'm gonna have to beat your ass. Shit, come on, let's 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 lock down. If you ain't willing to do that, baby, you could be fighting a motherfucker today and everybody will hate you tomorrow. You're not kidding. I'm not even kidding. Yep. You said facts, that's why I say it to myself. Yep. I'm telling you. And then you'll be thinking, okay, I'm about to go see so-and-so. You go see so-and-so. They be like, what the fuck is you doing over here? You got all that shit started yesterday. And da -da -da. I'm like, I got all the what? Like, you literally utterly confused. Like, you don't even know what the fuck going on at this point. I done beat her ass behind you. And now we not cool. They not cool. They not cool with me. Matter of fact, they friends the whole incarceration. And from there forward, we don't even speak. It's like we enemies of the of the compound. It's like that. You gotta be careful even who you trust in prison. If you don't really build the, a, a good relationship with somebody, anybody can turn on you. They don't give a fuck. Let them be hungry. Let them be indigent. Don't, they don't give a fuck. If they indigent and somebody come up to them and they be like, yo, you might get caught and you might go to lock, but if you do go to lock, I'll pay you more. But if you go up there, because this happened to me before. This girl was indigent, and she was real hungry. I'm going to tag her, too. That way she can come and um, put a comment in here so y'all can know I'm not lying. But she, listen, I was into it with a whole nother girl. Me and this girl didn't, I didn't even really even know this girl. Matter of fact, we didn't even become close till after this happened. So... The girl's indigent, and the girl is mad. I, honestly, I don't even know what the girl was mad about, why she wanted her to fight me. Um, who gives a fuck? Probably because I was talking shit. I don't give a fuck. Something. Anyways, so the girl was like, hey, um, I'll give you 12 noodles if you go sneak and punch Janelle while she's talking. I'm sitting there talking. I'm sitting on top of the, uh, in the bathroom, I'm sitting on top of the counter. And I'm sitting there talking to my, I don't even know who I was talking to. I was talking to somebody. And this girl came, and she punched me on the side of my mouth. And I immediately, I got excited because I was going to be able to hurt somebody. <laughs> and I've been holding it in for so long. I was like, oh, shit. But then when I realized what I was doing, I'm like, who is this girl even? Did she even hit the right person? I don't even give a fuck at this point. I'm, a, I'm just going to headbutt her until she can't think no more. So I got on top of her. 
And mind you, my blood is like gushing out of my mouth, out of my lip. I didn't give a fuck. You punched me in my mouth? You're gonna eat this blood? Yeah. It sounded crazy? And it was crazy. I stood over her, just like this. I had her arms pinned down, and I was letting the blood race out of my mouth and into hers. Yeah. I know y'all probably like, damn, Janelle, you fucking disgusting. Guess what? If you come for me as a Taurus, I'm gonna come for you a little bit harder. And I don't give a fuck. I look, but you started this. So because you busted my lip, you need to drink this shit. Drink up, sis. So she's drinking the blood, not on purpose. And I start headbutting her real hard. They finally, when they hear the noise of the headbutt, they like, oh shit, get them off it. But y'all sent her to me. Y'all sent her to fight me. But now it's get her off of her. How you gonna send somebody for me and then whenever it's not going the way that y'all plan, it's, it's an issue. If y'all just now tuning in, it's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits. I do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 8 Central Time. Follow Couch Chronicles No Limits on Spotify, Pandora, THA Couch on Facebook, TikTok, and Big O. Couch Chronicles dot No Limits on Instagram and my main YouTube Instagram and my dot com, which is T-H-A, real J-A-N-E-L-L. I was actually supposed to have this one guest. It says, girl, they hitting with they lock. Yeah, and called it the Glock now. Yeah. Let me tell you something. And this is what everybody was was scared of. When I finally found out who, who sent that girl, you know, I was really like, I think I'm going to wait until she goes to sleep. And I'm going to keep beating her in the head with this lock in the sock. And um, I don't know who it was that talked me out of it, but they was like, Janelle, like, I'm, I've been watching you all night because I know, you know, that you want to get revenge. And it's not even worth it because you beat that girl's ass. It's not like they got what they want. I said, yeah, I know, but that girl really need to know that I'm not to be fucked with. But for what? Who are they to prove that I'm not to be fucked with now? Now, she's on meth. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that, but now she's on meth and can't even shake the habit. Call me all type of dust bunnies. Look at me now. Stop it. You know, people get it twisted when they think that because you're in prison and you look a certain way, that that's what you're going to be looking like for the rest of your life. Motherfucker, we are in prison. We are meant to look ugly. We They actually want us to be as ugly as possible because they make it to where we are as ugly as possible unless you do something to make yourself look and feel pretty while you're in prison. Because if you don't, then... Go on, little ugly. For real. We're going to jump into another song and we're going to keep it going. But I did want to show you guys this. Um, I can show it to you after these messages. Actually, I'm going to show you now so I can smoke the book. So... I wrote a penitentiary joint. Actually, this is actually a little bit bigger than a penitentiary joint. This motherfucker would have been like, whoa, what? Fall in if they would have seen this. Now, this one, they would have really been, bruh. But you see the difference in sizes? I did this on purpose because I was like, I'm going to smoke, you know, it was prison talk. We're going to smoke a joint, a prison joint. So we're going to smoke the skinny one to the song. <laughs> Oh, 
but you can guess that my gang said my baby something ain't right with this bitch. Yeah, I see so I cut you off to keep my energy. You say you love me, then why is that bitch? I need you in my life, just wait and you'll see. I appreciate the money, cause I grew up in the struggle. Appreciate the hood, cause it taught me how to hustle. Went through some hard times when I was down and my knuckles. I appreciate the ones who stuck around, just know I love you. I appreciate the money. share your story you are more than welcome to come sit on this couch and if you look behind me you'll see all these beautiful glow ups of some of my fellow inmates that was locked up in here and some of them i didn't do time with but guess what time is time you feel me and we all need to be celebrating i'm so whoever's watching i'm so super proud of you i'm proud of you look at how far you guys have come are you kidding tina love you i remember being on the yard and officers placing bets on some of the people that's that they feel is gonna come back. And look, the ones that they thought was gonna come back, we still out here. We still doing a damn thing. Of course we have to be who we have to be on the yard. So yeah, that's gonna make you think that we gonna that we gonna come back. But that's not the case. We have to put on a certain mask while we on the yard because we don't want to be bullied. We don't want to be punked. We don't want to be treated any old kind of motherfucking way. Some of y'all came out of prison a little bit meaner than you went into prison because, and the only reason why is because of things that you had to endure when you was on the yard. Yeah. They said you'll be back in six months, but the 19th you'll be out five years. That's what's up. Listen, if, if you heard that about yourself, leave me a comment. That shit is to be celebrated. They thought that we was going to be back within weeks, months. Look at us. Years, years that went by. Some of y'all got kids now. Some of y'all got married. I married my prison wife, the fuck? And I knew, listen, for those that know, if you know, you know. When I seen my wife on the yard. I didn't give a fuck who wanted her. I didn't give a fuck who she came with. I just knew that she was going to be mine. And I will tell y'all this. Persistent. Listen, I'm not only persistent and consistent with the couch. I was persistent and consistent with my wife. It took me two and a half years to get her. Almost three. So, if you want something, you go get it. Whether it's a job, whether it's some coochie, whether it's some dick. Whether it's a tattoo, whether it's some money, go get it. Go get it. <laughs> okay, so when you used to want to smoke on a yard, if you didn't have a Bible, amen, if you didn't have a Bible and you didn't have no tampon paper, you wasn't smoking. 
Amen. <laughs> I know y'all probably like, what the what? Amen. Yeah. You couldn't really just get no. You think that they were just handing out papers that was. No. You know what? Where we got papers that look just like this from? And look at the paper. You see it? We got it from the back of the Bible. And I've told you guys this before. Sometimes you'll see Genesis 101. Sometimes you'll see Job. Well, guess what? What you do know, it just will be a smooth. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And them, it, uh, baby, you think people be addicted to cigarettes out here? Oh, no. When they, when they want to smoke a cigarette on the yard, I've never smoked a cigarette, so I'm like, I used to be like, damn. Do you know I used to take my weed, because I used to make sure that I didn't give a fuck about eating. I really didn't. I'm not going to lie. I go to the kitchen. Canteen, that's going on weed. Weed and makeup. And I used to drink on the weekend, so weed, makeup, and hooch. So, <laughs> weed, makeup, and hooch. My ass is crazy. I used to smoke in the band room before anybody even, I, I would never even tell, not even my wife. I wouldn't tell anybody. I would just go in there and I would smoke my weed. And then when I was done, I'd come out like nothing happened. And guess what? The smell went away so quick. It just did. The one time I allowed somebody to come in there and smoke a cigarette, and I told them, I said, listen, if it ain't weed, it's going to be stuck to these walls. And it's going to go right in that gym. No, it's not. I promise I got some spray. Da, 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 da. Like, okay. Well, I'm going to go because I don't smoke cigarettes. So I'm going to let you have this. But you you, you in the band. I'm like, I know, but you want to smoke. I don't. I'm not a cigarette smoker. Go ahead. I don't give a fuck. How you say you got in this bitch, but don't say that I let you in. Do you know that this motherfucker got caught? Not even 10 minutes, not even 10 seconds after lighting the motherfucker. Not even. So, that was some bullshit. They almost got the uh, the band room locked down, but because the person that was in there smoking didn't belong, they was like, you know, we can't punish the band because who's this, who, 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 you know, they didn't have cameras to see who let them in, so... But you got to go through drastic things to smoke in prison. There was people that was bold enough to smoke on the yard. Like, I didn't mind smoking on the yard. If I find me um, a socket, I am popping that bitch. Mm -hmm. Thursday, we'll make a lighter. That's what we'll do. Thursday, we'll make a lighter. All you need, I ain't popping my socket. But what we're going to do is this. <laughs> This is what we can do. We can make one out of batteries. Because there's different ways that you can make a wick. It's different ways that you can make, you know, a lighter in prison. My my favorite way to me was just popping a socket. Fuck these sockets. Let them fix this bitch ass shit. <laughs> but it got to a point where they was like, if you pop your socket one more fucking time, I'm not coming back in here to fix it. I was like, you have to though. Like, what do you mean you're not coming back in here to fix my... They was like, stop popping it. I was like, damn. I'm going to have to go to somebody else's cell. So, but I used, people used to pay me for me to pop my socket and get their shit lit. But I was like, I'm going to have to start using your own room because, baby, I'm not about to be in the dark because you want to smoke a cigarette. I don't give a fuck how much THC you give me. Shit. If you're just now tuning in, it's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limit. This prison talk. All week on the couch. If you are brave enough to share your story, you are more than welcome to come sit on this couch. Or you could tap in on the live if you can't make it, if you're in a different state and you're like, hey, I do want to speak. Tap in on the live, I'll bring you up. We could talk about it because trust me, I keep saying this, your story could help somebody. And regardless if it's a, a war story or if it's a funny story, whatever it is, people need to hear it. There was some shit going on in the yard. Some fucked up shit, too. It wasn't always fun and games. Mm -mm. 
It was some fucked up shit going on with the officers. It was fucked up shit going on with the staff. All the time. And, you know, the only way that we was able to fight for, you know, our our, our rights and, and the things that's going on is to speak, is to send messages out to people who's out to help us. Some of us got out and we forgot. We forgot that we were supposed to send word back to, to, to get somebody to go check the mold or send word back to, to tell them that they need body cams on the officers. We forgot. We got so caught up in our lives out here in learning to be in the world that we forgot to check on our people, to check on your strong friends check on anybody that you fuck with doesn't matter if they locked up and if you're one of those ones that's like man I ain't spoke to my friends since they got locked up I don't even know how to write them listen I don't want to call you a fucking idiot because that's not what you are you're fucking ignorant and that just means that you just don't know <laughs> that's all it means you just don't know you know and because that's what you're telling me that you don't know. That's the reason why you didn't know how to write them. Well, guess what? Look it up. Look their name up. Look up how to write them. You can even Google how do you write somebody in prison? There's even ways to write people behind me. Emilio, JPay. You can go straight to a kiosk machine. He said, I got to see Chandler this weekend. I'm waiting on some visitation lists to be sent sent um, to me. Um, I know I could have printed it off myself, but I'm going to have them send it to me. And uh, me and my wife is going to go see a few people. So uh, I'm excited to, to go back in. Um, I had to get over my anxiety. Otherwise, I would have been back in. I could have been back in to go visit. But I, my anxiety, I, that's why I had to start prison talk. I'm like, let me get it out first. Let me, let me, let me speak, you know. Um, you know, thinking about having to go through the pat down and all of that. I'm like, ugh. I don't know if I can take that. So, I think I'm ready now. I think I'm ready now. So, I told my people to send me a visitation list. And I think I'm ready to go back in and visit. Um, shout out to Connie Johnson. I love you. Yes. Y'all, listen. Re-elections is coming up soon, so make sure that y'all re-elect Connie Johnson. Yes, I said it. I said it. And you're lucky it's prison talk because you're lucky you caught me on prison talk day because your information had been back there the whole week. Okay. I don't play no games when it comes to my girl. Gorgeous. I see you. I see you. So if you just have tuned in, it is the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits, but I keep telling y'all, and I want to stress this to you some more. Check on your people. Check on your people. Um, I don't know how many people just recently checked on me and they like, yo, I just recently lost somebody. And I noticed that, um, yeah, health has been getting a little bit, uh, you know, it's not been, it's not been the same as it used to be when I first met you. And, um, they right. You know, we are getting up in age and let's just be honest. We are, no matter how young we look, we're getting up in age. We're getting to the point where we have to make sure that we're okay. We have to check up on ourselves. You can't forget about checking up on you either. Take care of you. You never know what type of hidden diseases, hidden. Check on you. Find out. Don't ignore signs and feelings just because you're like, oh, well, shit. No. I don't want to lose y'all. I love y'all. I don't know if I can lose another person. I don't want to lose another until it's your time not because some health issue or because no because it was a natural cause I'll let it let, let us grow up and age together I need y'all y'all give me strength and I love y'all so much and I want you to be healthy and I want you to take care of yourself and I don't never want you to forget about you just because bills is coming up don't ever forget about you just because 
the rent is due. The fuck? No. No. Fuck the bill. I care about you. And your health. Do a wellness check on yourself. Don't just do wellness checks on your people. Don't forget about yourself. Don't say wellness check and you ain't waiting got a pap smear in 15 years. Don't say wellness check and you haven't even got um, your, your colon checked or your, your... Do a wellness check on yourself too. On your lose yourself as well. Sometimes we see things on Facebook and we're like, oh, okay, people doing good. And we don't think to be like, hey, how's your health? Because it looks like they're doing good and then all of a sudden they in the hospital or in the wheelchair. And you're like, oh, wow, uh, what did I miss? Do your wellness check on yourself and your people. Start with you first. Start with you first. You are so important to me. You are so important to me. Everybody I, I fuck with, everybody that I follow, everybody that follows me, I don't have to know you personally to care about you to want you to check up on yourself to where I know that, yo, my people is healthy. Like, we, we gonna grow, grow old together. We gonna be good. No, I want to. I love y'all. Check on your strong people. Check on yourself. Get yourself checked on. Go to the doctor. Get your date. Get your, your checkups. Ladies, if you are throwing that coochie at whoever you want, who gives a fuck who you throw it at, don't be having last year's cum inside of your coochie hole. Because you haven't gotten a pap and you haven't even cleaned that motherfucker to the back. Okay? Listen. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. We have to. And I don't know if you guys noticed any difference from being in prison, how your health was, and how your health is now. But I don't really feel like, I felt like I was hurting, but I didn't feel like I was hurting as bad as I am now. You know, and I feel like some of it is the after effect from prison. And you know, the next person that I get on here, I do want to ask them if that's the case for them. Do you feel like you've gotten any type of health issues from prison? Or, you know, do you feel the same when you went in that you do now? Like, what's the difference? Better or worse? It's the Couch Chronicles and there ain't no fucking limit. It's prison talk, prison jail talk this whole week on the couch. If you are brave enough to share your story, you're more than welcome to come sit on the couch. Shout out to all my couch potatoes that's tuned in. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in and listening on Spotify and Pandora. Big O, I see you. Everybody else, I see y'all. I see y'all. Don't ever, I always tell y'all this, but keep going for whatever you dream to do. Don't ever give up. Don't ever think that, oh, um, I don't have enough money to do this. Oh, I, bruh, keep fucking going. Keep doing that shit. Keep doing that shit. Dead ass. I am up for nomination um, to be uh, performing at the uh, at the Super Bowl next year. I posted it on my page. It's twenty dollars to vote. So if you would like to vote for me, go vote for me so I can perform at the Super Bowl next year. I'm excited. Um, I want to go whether I'm in a wheelchair or not. I'm not gonna let this wheelchair stop me. So I'm at a point now that I'm like, y'all, I'm not gonna stop. Um, you know, and I was, I was turning down shows. I was turning down recordings. I was, cause I was like, nah, I'm gonna wait till I get out the chair. I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting at all. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do what I need to do. And if they not wheelchair accessible, somebody gonna hold me up. I think. <laughs> it's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits. Let's jump into another song and I'm gonna wrap it up with some encouraging words. <laughs> Let's see what we got. <laughs>
Bitch, my ego, can you blame me? I be poppin' I shit And if she hatin' on the low, man, you ain't stoppin' this I do my damn thing, and you know that's a fact And I'm ain't happy, this money straight out the fuckin' trap And I be giving it, it's rollin' like a map Some of my people change, but I'm okay with that And I forget, but ain't no need to run it back You bitch, your bed, now lay it down, go take a nap Hold up, I hope you didn't think that I believe you but ain't no need to go back no. If I cut you up, I leave you no slack And please don't test my things up I'll fuck around and go back, you know that But back to this money, back to the shame Straight to the highway, hustling, pushing things I'm never stopping, gotta act them bad, gotta act them bad Why the fuck would I? I need my hands I mean, I do though I need my motherfucking hands Oh, I'm tripping I think it's you Oh, it's me Oh well. If it's my ego, can you blame me? I be popping. I be popping. And if she hating on the low, man, you ain't stopping this. I do my damn thing, and you know that's a fact. Yeah. And I'm ain't happy. This money straight out the fucking trap. Right. And I be giving it and rolling like a mountain. Some of my people change, but I'm okay with that. And I forget, but they don't need to run it back. You made your bed, I lay it down. Take a nap. Things and you know, there was times on the yard that I was scared. 
not of a person, but of the outcome of, oh, did I get a class action misconduct? Oh, are they gonna take away days from me? Like, oh, you know, um, just, or am I going to lock, you know, and is somebody gonna steal my shit? You know, but just a lot of different things. And I'm, I open my platform to every single one of you guys because I love y'all and to me, y'all are my family. It doesn't matter if I knew you personally on the yard or not, you are my family. And I look at y'all as family, so I love y'all. And I will see y'all on Thursday. Wish me luck for my procedure tomorrow. I love you guys so much. It's the Couch Chronicles and it ain't no fucking limits. Love you, Rice Love you, Big O. See y'all Thursday. Spotify, Pandora, thank you so much for tuning in. It's the Couch Chronicles, and it ain't no fucking limits, of course.